In this video, we will be creating a sheet metal rose. We are first going to begin with galvanized tension wire. This is typically used in fencing applications and can be purchased from most hardware stores or home centers. Using a steel rule, we're going to measure and mark the galvanized tension wire at 10 inches. After that, we're going to use the bench vise to secure the tension wire so we can cut it. You'll want to position the tension wire so that our 10 inch mark is in close proximity to the edge of the vise. If positioned too far away from the vise, it makes it difficult to cut. With that tension wire secured and our mark in close proximity to the vise, we will be using a hacksaw to cut the tension wire to length. The tension wire is not very straight, so we are going to use slip joint pliers and the bench vise to help straighten out this tension wire to the point that when you push it, it rolls rather than just gets pushed. We can clamp the tension wire in the bench vise and use slip joint pliers to just slightly bend that tension wire to take out any irregularities. You will need to do this at multiple locations on that tension wire. The objective, of course, being that it rolls fairly smoothly. When completed, you will have a finished stem that is straight and measures 10 inches in length. We will be using a die to cut the external threads on the stem of our metal rows. I'm going to start by securing the stem into the bench vise, having just a couple inches extending above the bench vise. Using an 832 die, I'm going to slowly feed that onto the stem. Once the die gets started, I'm going to back it up a little bit with each turn to help clear the chips away. We are threading the stem, creating external threads to accommodate the aluminum nuts when we assemble this together we'll have one aluminum nut all of our flower petal components and then another aluminum nut on top that will sandwich it all together with the stem we're going to thread about three-fourths of an inch to one inch down the length of the stem. And our stem is now complete. To lay out the petals, we are going to be transferring our template onto some galvanized flashing that is used for roofing. This can also be bought at a home center or hardware store. There are six templates total, and all of them should fit on your sheet metal. It doesn't make very much sense to cut the first piece out of the center because then you end up wasting a lot of material around it. So we're going to orient all of these pieces to minimize the chance of waste and maximize our material usage. Once you've figured out how they will be oriented, we can take a Sharpie and trace around each of the templates. 
I'm also going to trace around the hole in the center. Using aviation snips, I'm then going to roughly cut out each of the petals and then I'm going to come back and more accurately cut around each of the petals. Once all of the pieces are completely cut out, you can discard the scrap and we're ready to move on. We're going to be adding some texture to each of the petals using a nail. We're using the nail as a scribe essentially to score some marks into all of the petals. We're making straight marks on the edge of each of the petals. And when we fold this up, that's going to give us some texture on the edges of each of these petals. When you get to the sepal, which is kind of like the leafy part underneath the flower, we're going to create what looks like leaf veins on this portion. And the harder that you push with the nail, the more deep the scores are going to be on the metal. After all of our parts have been textured, we need to create a hole in the center of each part so they will fit onto the stem. To do that, we are going to be using a scrap chunk of wood, the nail that we were previously using, and a hammer. The goal is that the hole be in the exact center and that the hole we make is large enough to fit the stem through it. This hole is not large enough, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. We're going to continue that process with each of the pieces. Now one thing that we do need to take a look at, although we have our hole to the correct size, if we flip that piece over, we have a real sharp edge on it. So we need to flatten that sharp edge down. But then we need to double check that our stem is going to fit through. And so you might have to do this a couple times where we widen the hole, check both sides to make sure that the metal is still flat and there's no sharp edges, and then widen the hole a little bit again until we have it so the hole is flat, yet it is wide enough the stem will fit through. When finished, the whole pile should sit fairly flat. The last thing that we need to do to prepare these petals is to cut each of the petals down just before the circle in the center. To do that, we will be using the aviation snips. The biggest thing is you do not want to cut too far or when you assemble this together, the petals just rip off. But we want to cut far enough that we will be able to fold up each of these petals. We'll do this with each of the pieces. We do not need to do this with that tiniest piece or the sepal, that little kind of leafy piece. 
After the petals, we can make the aluminum nuts. I'm going to begin by starting with a small piece of aluminum. This piece measures about a quarter inch wide by about two inches long. I'm going to be marking this aluminum at about a quarter of an inch. I'm using a nail to score that line in there. This will give me a square piece of aluminum that measures about a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. I'm then going to use that nail as a punch and put a small divot right in the center of that square. After that, I'm going to secure it in the bench vise, making sure I do not over tighten it because this is aluminum and it will bend easily. Using a 9 ths inch drill bit, I'm going to very carefully drill in the location that I had previously punched. And then using an 832 tap, I'm going to very gently tap the hole that I just drilled. Once I get the tap started, I'm going to back it off a little bit each turn. And then lastly, I can reposition my mark just outside of my vise. And using a hacksaw, I can cut off that piece. If it needs finished up at all, you can use a piece of sandpaper and clean up the edges. And after all cleaned up on the sandpaper, we have the two aluminum nuts that we will use for our metal rose project. After having used an 832 die to thread the stem of our metal flower, we're going to start by installing one of the aluminum nuts that we previously created after that, we can install the sepal, which is kind of that uh, leafy-like looking piece. We want to install each of these pieces with the textured side up. The next piece will begin with our largest flower petal piece, and we're going to progressively get smaller with each piece that we install. And the smallest piece will go last, followed by our second aluminum nut that we created. Ideally, we want to orient each of the petals so that the cut portions are offset from each other. You can use slip joint pliers to gently snug down that aluminum nut, but you need to be very careful because it is aluminum and if you over tighten it, you will strip the threads on either the nut or you will strip the threads on the galvanized tension wire. To fold up the petals for our metal flower, we're first going to start with needle nose pliers and we're going to bend up one petal of our first layer. We're going to be using the needle nose pliers to roll each edge inward towards the center and the top is going to be rolled back ever so slightly. Next we will move on to the next petal. The edges are going to be rolled inward slightly. The top is going to be rolled back just a little bit. And we will continue with the same process 
for that last petal on our first piece. I'm then going to come back with large slip joint pliers and I'm going to gently bend each of those petals towards the center. We want the flower to be folded up very tightly, but we don't want to be too aggressive where we break the petals. We're going to follow the same procedures with each additional petal, the sides being rolled inward ever so slightly, the top being rolled back, and every two or three petals we can use those slip joint pliers and push that in towards the center. With the sepals, we're going to take the back end of our needle nose pliers and we're going to roll that leafy part around the back end of those. When finished, we can add a little paint I am actually using steel red layout fluid. The layout fluid is a little bit thinner and won't cover up the texture that we put on the petals. Once the layout fluid has dried, our metal flower is complete. To keep this flower healthy, you need to make sure to keep the container filled about three-fourths with bolts. Check it every few days. The flower will use about a half a pound of bolts a week for the first two weeks. These flowers need a healthy supply of nuts and bolts if you want to keep it alive for any length of time.